Hey everybody, we're here for a new episode of the show that's yet to be named, the movie podcast where we talk about movies. I'm here with Johnny Donuts Triple Seven and Muscles Marinara. <laughs> uh, that's I want that as a wrestling name. That's literally that's your wrestling, wrestling name, name, Caps Muscles Marinara. That's the no, but wait, when you came up with that, I have to admit that was the best wrestling name of all time. And like, I wish you called me that instead of him, but. <laughs> Um, so we're doing Clint Eastwood movies. So our top five favorite Clint Eastwood movies. Um, I know Caps likes this one. Caps is a big Clint Eastwood fan. I am too. You know, kind of. Um, so we'll jump into this. Caps, you get to go first. Uh, number five. Uh, I couldn't choose between these two, but uh, so I'll include them both. Escape from Alcatraz and In the Line of Fire. Okay, so for me, my number five is a few dollars more. My number five is every which way but loose. Whoa! <laughs> right turn, Clyde. Yeah, that's good though. <laughs> like, why didn't I? How did I not even see that? Like, I forgot about that. Okay, anyways, well, uh, Caps. My number four is Unforgiven. My number four is Kelly's Heroes. My number four is The Mule. Oh, the mule. That's the new one, right? That's his latest one, yeah. yeah. Or whatever. Um, caps. Uh, number three, Gran Torino. Number three for me is Dirty Harry. Uh, number three for me is Mystic River. Yeah. <clears throat> but he, Mystic River, but he wasn't in that one, is he? Wasn't he? I'm pretty sure he directed he it. He yeah, directed I think it. I think he's in it for like not as like a, a major can, role. Yeah, he has. I think he has. I, don't, I honestly don't remember Mystic River. To yeah, be honest, I just remember it was a good Kevin Bacon movie. <laughs> um, number two is the trilogy "Man with No Name" trilogy: Fistful of Dollars, Few Dollars More, and Good Bad, the, the Good, the Bad, the Ugly. Number two for me is Escape from Alcatraz. Number two is Unforgiven. So. Yeah, I know what Caps' is number one is. Go for it. Dirty Harry. It. The spot. Like, honestly, I, I would put the, the whole series on there, Sands, the last one. That's what, Enforcer, right? The Enforcer, Magnum. Magnum so, Force. Mag- Force yeah. So, Magnum, Magnum Force is the second one. Enforcer is the third. Um, oh, gosh. What's the uh, fourth one? Oh my god. I you know what's funny? I always thought in the line of fire as the fourth one. No. Anyway, um the fifth one is with uh Jim Carrey. So I, I remember Jim Carrey being the fifth okay. one. Okay. Huh? <laughs> Who? That was his uh movie debut. Hold on, I, I'm on a hefty scroll right now. The Deadpool is the last one. Deadpool. Yes. Deadpool, Deadpool okay. was the fifth one. What was the fourth one again? I can't remember the fourth one. Like I love the Sun movie so no, much. Like Sun Impact. Impact. Sudden, Sudden Impact, Impact okay. was the fourth one. Okay. Sudden Impact was the one where uh had that famous line, um, go ahead, make my day. Mm-hmm. Okay, well, guess what? We're still not even done the list yet. So yeah. my so, number one is the good, the bad, and the ugly. And mine is the I have to group them together as the man with no name trilogy. Okay. Alex acceptable. We're accepting these new stipulations. <laughs> No. you can't um, pick one they're iconic so that's i'll, I'll go through my list again because we kind of got off there so i have a few dollars for a few dollars more kelly's heroes dirty harry escape from alcatraz the good the bad and the ugly oh uh, mine was every which way but loose the mule mystic river unforgiven and the man with no name trilogy um from five to one uh couldn't pick between these two escape with from alcatraz or in a line of fire uh, Unforgiven, Gran Torino, uh, Man With No Name, Trilogy, and Dirty Harry Movies, uh, with the exception of the last one. No, he's Deadpool. picking them all. You have to put uh, the Deadpool in there. <laughs> you can. can put Deadpool with, with uh, Ryan Reynolds. <laughs> My list, I do whatever I want. All right. <laughs> See, I told you. That Nick is... What would it be? What was the name? Muscles Marinara. Muscles Marinara. So that's the list. If you like it, thank you for watching. That's still the best name. I'm getting a shirt with that on it. Thanks for watching. If you only came for the list, if you want to stay for the discussion, we're opening the table. Um, Kelly's Heroes. I'm saying it. I'll get it out of the way. Uh, it's a fun, like comedy movie, which like we don't get a lot of comedy from from uh, Clint Eastwood, and then it has like 
a huge cast in it of, of people with uh, Donald Sutherland is one of the main cast. And, and they're like, it's like in war and they go on like an adventure to get to the uh, beat the bad guys. Yeah. And I th- I, that's why I put every which way, but loose on there as well, because that's another one. It's something you don't see from Eastwood and you know, it's a comedy and yeah. you know, and it has an orangutan. Yeah. Okay. We're on an orangutan. You know we're on an orangutan kick for the last few episodes for some reason. <laughs> Yeah, you know what? Just let them go. So, uh, speaking of like comedy or ish, comedy ish or style ones, uh, I have also Thunderbolt and Lightfoot as one of my honorable mentions. Which mm-hmm. it's like he has a few comedies, but like I prefer, I've actually watched Ke- Kelly's Heroes more than a few times. So, I figure as a favorites list, that should be on my yeah. list. Um, Caps, do you have any honorable mentions you want to talk about? Throw one out there. Give us one. Oh, um, the rookie. Ooh, that's uh, that's a oh i didn't even think of that Shit, um, i should have looked up some stuff what was some of those movies that they made in the 90s uh space cowboys space cowboys is one then there's a couple other ones what's up the one the boxer one with the girl oh a million dollar uh, baby. baby that's on my yeah. list that's on my, my yeah, honorable mentions that's, a, that's on my mentions as well um Oh man, I gotta think about uh, those ones from the. Uh, okay, well, well, you think we'll 90s. get into some other ones. You got yeah. any uh, triple sev? Uh, there's the outlaw Josie Wales. That's that That's, was on my. That yeah. listen to me. That was it was between that and Kelly's Heroes and uh, for a few dollars more. I was like arguing yeah. with myself for for a while. Right. I also had Pale Rider was pretty close. Yeah, where Eagles Dare was another one. Where Eagles Dare. That that was also like I didn't even put it on my list. I forgot to add it, but that was another one I was really close to. Yeah, like, pushing up. Like Grant I mean, Torino any, I have Grant Torino was on my honor roll. That was the famous get off my uh, get off my lawn, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah. That yeah. was uh, a heartbreak ridge. Was another like yeah. this. He did a lot. Like in the sixties and seventies, he did. <laughs> after he moved away from the westerns, he did a lot of war films. I noticed. Yeah, it, it just became a thing, though, right? He he was like a mega star, but in a in a different way. Like I can't explain it. He was like, I don't care about anything. That he's kind of like the Harrison Ford of his time. Yeah, I think. like but he just it, didn't care. But then he did. Uh, then he went into like the like romantic film, like with the Bridges of Madison County. Yeah, which that's actually a good movie. It is. It's a really good movie. I remember I took a girl on a date back <laughs> to go see that film in the in the nineties. So, so one I have that nobody said yet is High Plains Drifter, mm-hmm. which is like one of my favorites. Um, Unforgiven is on my honorable mentions. I know you both have it, so why don't we talk about Unforgiven? Wait, do you both have Unforgiven? Yeah. Mm-hmm. Okay. Yeah, we all have Unforgiven on that one. I um, do not. Yeah, but Unforgiven, I think that is what I think that's what caused the Clint Eastwood resurgence in the '90s. Yeah, and that kind of solidified him because did he direct that movie as well? I I know what one best. Yeah, he did direct Unforgiven, right? Yeah, Mm -hmm. he directed Unforgiven. He did. And I think that's what also solidified him as a A A-list director as well. Mm -hmm. That's what transitioned him from acting to directing. And I think that's why I think Unforgiven needs to be on a five favorites list is because... He's so much more now. You know what I mean? Like I okay, this is my reasoning though, and and I understand your point. For me, it's I don't think it's it's I can't even speak English. I don't think that it's not a good movie. I think it's an amazing movie, but in comparison to other Eastwood westerns, he's just a, a shell of his self. And it's like if you're such a fan of his old ones, watching him in this is like it's hard because he's like he does he's immobile. He's like an old man and but that was the character though wasn't it? i know like but this... it's just it's so opposite of what you want from him in a cowboy movie he's just like a yeah. farmer and he doesn't want no part of this type of situation not, not that last 25 minutes yeah well that, that, okay. that's like a it's like a three-hour movie thanks for giving me something in the last 25 minutes <laughs> so those, so are those other movies from back in the 60s i get where you're coming yeah, from but, but, yeah, but, but wait a minute wait. my argument to you is is that unforgiven he has that switch, okay? So those, those movies in the 60s, he's got that one character from start to finish. In, in Unforgiven, yes, you're absolutely right. He's a farmer. He, he's out of that life. But you push him, and that's exactly what happened in that movie. Is what they did to Morgan Freeman's character right. pushed him to, to the point where he just switched. And he doesn't give a he shit saw- anymore. 
and now he doesn't give a shit anymore. And once he entered that bar, you saw that character from the from the sixties. See, and 70s. this is just the thing where, where I think you're getting me wrong here. Is I'm not saying he doesn't do a good job or the movie's bad. I if you're gonna ask me, do you want to watch Unforgiven? I would be like, no, I don't want to watch Unforgiven. You'd rather like, watch a Sergio Leone I would, film. Or... I would rather never watch Unforgiven again, to be honest with you. Not because it's bad, just it doesn't entertain me to the point where I'm like, I can't. Like, I could watch Good, the Bad, and the Ugly a hundred times, which I also get your point for a long movie where he doesn't really have an arc. Yeah. It's still like, I don't know. It's the, the visual of the movie and the character's so badass, right? Yeah. But, or like Dirty Harry. It's like, I, I just, I love that, that character's iconic. It, it stands the test of time of like this hardened cop which became like the archetype of everything that came after it right like your uh mel gibson and lethal yeah. weapon and like i agree that there are two iconic characters that have been and parodied to no end too like you'll always catch a dirty harry parody or a reference in a film you'll always catch like uh uh a man with no name parody and stuff like even in back to the future three the whole where he was wearing the chest plate was taken right out of uh, the mouth. Oh, his name is Clint Eastwood. Clint Eastwood, right? Like, I mean... Um, but I, I think that it, it's just... Uh, I don't know. It, he's Everybody just has their own person. taste, man. Yeah. Everybody yeah, has their own taste. I mean. so, and, but, and that, that was know, my, my reasoning for not having Unforgiven on my list. That's fine, yeah. It's not, yeah. it's not because I think it's a bad movie. I think it's amazing. It's probably better than most of the movies on my list. I just yeah. wouldn't want to watch that's it. That's you, that, and personal opinion, and that's yeah. fine. Like I said, whereas I wasn't that big of a Clint Eastwood fan growing Until up. that? I, it, when I watched Unforgiven, and then I saw the back catalog of all the Sergio Leone films and the Man With No Name trilogy, so I went back. So Unforgiven for me was kind of like my gateway to Clint Eastwood, and then I went back and saw all his other films. For me, at least, that's 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 a good one. You know what? Uh, I'm trying to think. Like, mine was probably Escape from Alcatraz, and it was probably just because it was always on TBS. Yeah, it's like true. it used to play over and over and over, and it was such an interesting movie. Yeah. And then I probably saw like Dirty Harry next, and then Gran Torino, and then I I randomly just watched The Good, The Bad, and The Ugly one day, and I was like, this is like the greatest movie ever made i'm like how has no why is nobody talking about this yeah and and that's what i mean and that's why i saw this character in uh in unforgiven so i said okay i'm gonna go back and now like i mean i always knew about the character like from like even from back to the future i know who clint eastwood was and i know who he was parodying in that film yeah it's like he's iconic yeah so it's like it took Unforgiven to go back and watch his other films. And then that's when I started watching Kelly's Heroes. I watched The Outlaw Josie Wales. I watched The Man With... So it kind of went back. Like, we all knew who Dirty Harry was. I caught Dirty Harry films here and there. But like I said, I went back and I rewatched and really watched them With, as a teen. And and I think Unforgiven is one of those movies, too, that was in my my rewatching like what now i've discovered clint eastwood let me go watch all these movies i remember buying it i have it i have the clip open dvd oh the yeah <laughs> and uh yeah i i mean he he established himself as a really good director after that mm -hmm. I, I mean you could probably do your an entire list of just the movies he directed i'm pretty sure he also directed million dollar baby yep and um, gran torino and, and million dollar baby he's great in it and mm -hmm. i believe i should have looked this up but i believe he got nominated for supporting actor and he he's great in that movie that that movie is a, a really good movie but without him it doesn't work like even if he yeah. directed it and he doesn't play that role it still doesn't work for me it, that character is so valuable to that movie which i know it's not on my list so yeah. i just i want to talk about dirty harry because i know how much caps likes dirty harry and he probably knows more about it than any of mm -hmm. us so he's going to talk about Dirty Harry now. Well, I mean, he's he's the OG in terms of the cheesy one-liners that came straight from those films. Um, you know, um, he was the ultimate badass. You know, he, he uh, you know, he got the, the not politically correct guy and, you know, he's just fighting the system. And, you know, that's pretty much... Uh, um, you know, established in all sorts of movies stemming from the cheesy action films from the 80s and some of those action films from the 90s. So up until now, it's just everything come, came from Dirty Harry movies. And um, the way it's shot, 
Uh, I think the fourth one he actually directed, if I if I'm not mistaken. The I fourth think one he directed, he directed the last two. Mm-hmm. Um, but the way the first one was shot, uh, just showing all San Francisco, and um, it just it's just San Francisco is is like a character in the film, pretty much. Yeah, especially um, in the first one. Yeah, so it's it's just. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. Uh, man's got the nose limitations. Second one, the fourth one, um, make my day. The first one, do you feel lucky? It's, it's. You know what I mean? It's. I can go on and on, and uh, you know. I mean, I'll, do you feel lucky? Punk is arguably like the most popular, like one-liner of all time. Like you can easily make an argument for it in the section of like. Everyone knows that it was. It's been parodied a hundred times. Listen. I think that's the most quoted. Yeah, that I think With, is the without, most quoted. Yeah. Without Dirty Harry, we don't get Loaded Weapon Part One. That had no loaded sequel. Weapon. And Tim Curry has <laughs> as a Girl Scout. But Anyways. That, yeah. <coughs> yeah. No. Like I mean, and I think like going back to what we we're saying, I think now Harris, uh, uh, Clint Eastwood, he's now solidified as like I mean. Oh, was it a few years ago with the political uh, speech he did it with a chair, an empty chair? Yeah, yeah, that was a knock on Barack Obama. I remember that, but yeah, come on, man, that guy's like, oh, he's like eighty-five. No, but I time. mean, like, I mean, he was eighty-five <laughs> at the time, but like that, it's a performance in itself. I'm saying it wasn't like it, yeah. whether you agree or disagree with what he said doesn't matter. That that was a performance onto itself. Yeah, he he apparently is a very good stage actor, and we've just we never really got to see it. And yeah. we think of him as as a cowboy because he was typecast. He looked like a badass. He looked like a no, I don't give a shit type of dude. So they they made him this character, and it, he rolled with it, and he, he yeah. carried it for as long as he could. And then when it was a, when cowboy when westerns were over, war movies were big because of Vietnam. So he's yeah. like, oh, I'm going to just start being in war movies too. So he did both. And then in the 80s, he kind of just did whatever he wanted to do. Yeah, but then in the 90s, he kind of started doing other things. Well, like even it started in the 70s too, because he did Every every Which Way But Loose. But, but loose, then in the yeah. 90s, he did the one that you were talking about before with Meryl Streep. Um, yeah. what was Madison, it? Uh, the Bridges of Madison County? Bridges of Mad- yeah. yeah. Um, Bridges of Madagascar. So, the Bridges yeah, of Madagascar. Right? <laughs> But like it, it seems as though he's he's built such, such a reputation for himself as as being a a prominent uh, director that you know now it's like the the movies that he's directed are starting to get the same notoriety and same recognition as the movies that he started. Yeah. Um, so like he, he's just um, all around a very very good performer. Has um, he won more Oscars as a director than as an actor? Yes. I don't think I, he I ever think so. won as an actor. No, he, right? Okay. Yeah. I I don't know for sure that I, I when it, my big <laughs> weakness of movies is awards. I don't know anything about a, who wins. I'm not awards. an awards guy either. I find them boring to be honest. Like I no, watch them but I don't know. I think for them. sure. I think for sure that he's won way more awards as a director as he did as an well, actor. Do you want me to look yeah. all any, up for you guys? Um, you know, like what what did he do? He did the one with uh Sully. Yeah, uh, Sully. Which which was well done. Sully, um, Sully is a really good movie that didn't get enough movie. love. Yeah, that didn't get enough love. Yeah, I agree with that. But yeah, I know he's no, won for story. He, yeah, he's won. I know he I'm pretty sure he won for Million Dollar Baby. He won that one. And I know I, he won, I think he won the Oscar for uh uh Gran Torino as well, didn't he? I'm not sure for Gran Torino, but he definitely won for Unforgiven. I know yes. that for a fact. Um I will say that uh for the uh, in the line of fire, John Malkovich, yeah, he a puts on a great performance. Performer there. Yeah, in that movie, like you know, I, I and I think Clint Eastwood kind of recognized that, and he just because I don't, um, uh, I'm not sure if he directed that one too. I'm not sure if he did. I gotta that, that uh, one, I don't I gotta, know. I gotta check that one out, but like but he off- did a couple other movies in, in the 90s too. He did, um, Absolute Power, uh, yeah. he did. All these other movies that uh, you know don't get mentioned a lot, um, you know he's he's just he's kicks ass, man. Yeah. Kicks and, ass. And off topic too, John Malkovich is another is an actor that's completely like go, flies under the radar a lot. Like they, he rarely gets. He's always good in everything he does and rarely gets noticed. All right, <clears throat> hold on. So 
He won the Oscar for best movie for uh, Million Dollar Baby. Mm -hmm. He won the Oscar for best directing for Million Dollar Baby. He won uh, best picture and best director for um, Unforgiven, and that's all he won. He's never won any acting. Oh, he he didn't win Grand Torino then. Okay, interesting. But he was nominated, I believe. I I thought he won something for Mystic River. Uh, but I guess I was wrong. Mystic Pizza, great film. You Julia like Roberts. Those, reference, those reference drops. <laughs> he, uh, for Mystic River, he got nominated Best Picture and Best Director. Okay, he was yeah. nominated. Okay, I really like yeah. that film. It's a good film. <laughs> it is Mystic Pizza. Mystic Pizza. Julia Roberts. Um, Lily, Tom- so what, Lily Tomlin. What, what lies beneath? Oh, wrong episode. Right. Um, yeah, you know what? I I don't even really have any more of this. I think, but he's like. He's just so iconic as a, as an actor and a director, and he spans so many generations of being a, a superstar. Yeah. Was a sixty plus year career now? Yeah, I would. I think he started in the mid fifties or something yeah. like that. So, and he's still going. Yeah. So good on him. Well, good yeah, on him. F- funny uh, side note: him and Arnold Schwarzenegger are apparently really good friends. And they talk about it. He, yeah, they there's pictures of them skiing, and I have one. I'll, I'll post it eventually. But uh, there's um that that's a really funny one to me. That that, that relationship. Yeah. Now we need we need an Eastwood directed Arnold film. Yeah, it's a predator. <laughs> well, there there have been I've seen Dirty Harry documentaries where Arnold Schwarzenegger has been featured, and he's he's uh, he's also like influenced. By Clint Eastwood and a lot of his movies that he did in the eighties, the the yeah. one liners and all the stuff. It's just I believe he said that of Dirty Harry. it's his favorite yeah. actor. And I could so. see that, like you could see the influence. I I agree with you, Caps. Like you could see the, especially like you said, those one liners. You could totally see that influence there. Yeah, I mean, and Arnold was like his own thing too. It, it's it's crazy because he kind of, if you really look at it, you're right. He does have a lot of like the emulating of the Clint Eastwood, like even down his, to like when he chews on the cigar kind of yeah, thing, right? Like so that's... his characters are so stoic and they're so badass and they're always like loners, even mm-hmm. if they're like part of a the FBI. They're like the FBI agent that doesn't work with anybody except Tom Arnold. Tom Arnold. <laughs> <laughs> Tom Arnold. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, I don't have anything else. Do you guys have anything else? Nope. All nope. right. All right. Thank you for watching. Let us know what your favorite uh, muscles marinara is in the comments, <laughs> and like, comment, subscribe. You know what time it is. <laughs>